What's up everyone, pick six touchdown back today, giving you another commentary, how to commentary. This one, I'll be going over strategies to be a dominating presence when using a tank or LAV in Battlefield 3. Anyone can drive a tank, but not many use strategy from what I've seen in the online play. Many rookies think they're invincible because they're surrounded by armor in the tank, they don't take proper strategy, and this results in their death and the loss of the tank for the team. I'll go over everything I feel that's, that is most effective after trying just about everything out for myself. First thing is the basics of driving because this is a commentary based for rookies and high skill players. I want everything covered. You already know the basics, that's fine, but I'll be going into the later stuff as we go. I'll be brief because everyone can do it, it's very simple. I play on Xbox, so for Xbox, right triggers to accelerate. Letting it go or holding left trigger stops the tank. Left trigger also backs up the tank and it's critically important to remember. I'll explain that point more as we go. Left stick moves and turns the entire tank and right stick shifts the upper part of the tank with the cannon. Lastly, clicking down on left stick is the turbo. This helps you get to or away from a dangerous situation quickly. Okay, now I'll talk about setting up your tank for maximum effectiveness. First and foremost, you have to use the appropriate setups. Proximity scan is the most important unlock for tanks and LAVs because it works superbly to detect infantry on the ground nearby trying to disable the tank or destroy it with C4. A sniper might not be a direct threat to a tank, but remember, his support and engineer teammates will be able to spawn on him if you don't detect and dispatch him. Always think ahead. I prefer a combo of the shell, the, the, uh, the primary shell, and either the heavy machine gun or the canister shell for infantry and non-armored vehicles. In this video in the background, you'll see I use the canister shell a lot. I also use thermal optics because on top of proximity, proximity scan for detection, using thermal helps you find pesky infantry hiding in bushes, underneath trucks, or in other slippery locations. The only counter to thermal is if a soldier is wearing the spec ops, spec ops camouflage, which most of the times when you play in games you'll notice that people aren't high enough level to even have it unlocked, so they won't have it. However, everything you choose is open to preference. As long as you can deal with both infantry and vehicles, you should be fine in whatever you choose. The only difference between tanks and LAVs is that later in their unlock cycle, Having the option of unlocking armor-piercing rounds, which are very similar to the main weapon, but more damaging to enemy armor, obviously. But they're less, damage to, less damaging to infantry because of the decreased splash damage. I still prefer this over the guided missile, but again, your preference. You can be highly effective on your own, but having a good gunner, especially one you know and can communicate with, can be a world of difference. When you communicate with your gunner, your chances of dominance and survival increase exponentially. I usually play in a squad of friends I'm familiar with and we all communicate and rarely lose together doing so. So communication is, is pivotal. One can focus on infantry and the other can focus on vehicles or assist with the infantry. Uh, one can also repair the tank as the others continues to fight off the threat. More on this in a minute. Lastly, another set of eyes spotting in the tank can't hurt the team either, but that's the absolute minimum that a gunner can have as a positive impact. It's always beneficial to have one. Both the gunner and driver should be using the engineering kit for repairs. The driver and gunner should decide who should repair given the circumstances. If you're in immediate danger versus infantry with RPGs, for example, the driver should repair and the gunner should defend. When facing a tank, the gunner should repair and the driver can fight off the opposing tank. But keep in mind, both of these circumstances should only be used if a getaway isn't an option. It's this, this next point is going to seem extremely obvious, but when you repair the tank, repair the tank away from the direction of fire and anticipate where the enemy will be attacking from. Too many times I've seen players just jump out randomly and start repairing only to be killed by infantry nearby or the opposing tank putting a shell into their face. It's it's actually f sort of funny when you think of it that way, but believe me, if it happens to you, it's not even slightly funny. It's actually annoying. 
Key point to remember is that the direction that the turret or cannon barrel, if you're the driver, is facing is the location where you will exit the tank. Having the third seat unlocked for the tank is beneficial to be able to use the guided shell weapon. The third seat targets, then the driver locks on and fires the guided shell. It deals tons of damage versus anything it locks into and can target air vehicles as well. In my experiences, this is a one-hit kill versus enemy choppers and non-armored vehicles, so it's, ex it's extremely effective against armored vehicles too. Some would argue it's overpowered, but you have to be smart to use it and have someone willing to play as the target designator because, well, I've seen, in my experiences, a ton of the higher level people use it, so you'd be dumb not to use it as well. Now, I'll go over attack and defense strategies together because they seem to overlap. If you're attacking one, if you're attacking an area and suddenly you're faced with the very real possibility of having the enemy team spawning near you, make sure you do not allow any infantry near you at all costs. Many of them that rush you are carrying C4 and they'll try and blow up your tank. Either go forward or backward and shoot at the enemy as you do. Do not chase, stay stationary and try to fight them off all at once. If stay moving and fight them off in stages. Also avoid going too far in enemy territory at once. If you do, getting disabled by several enemy RPGs shooting at you leaves you in the dangerous predicament of trying to get away and try and repair all at the same time. In addition, make sure you have a clear way to either drive forward or backward. This means paying attention to potential objects behind you and in front of you. Believe me, there isn't a worse feeling in the world than trying to back up a disabled tank to safety only to hit a blown up truck or pillar and suddenly they have a jump on you with RPGs. When you're on the attack or retreating, always have the front of your tank face where you think the enemy will attack. The tank is weakest at the back, so always face the direction where you think the enemy will be. Because you know the back is your weakness, logic dictates that the, it's the enemy's weakness as well. It's the best point to attack, so always attack there. Attacking the side of the tank is even more preferable than attacking the direct front. There's simply just too much armor at the front to end a battle quick. If possible, always try to anticipate an enemy's path and flank it. If you know it's coming from its spawn and you're near it and is going to try and capture a flag saying conquest, try to stay out of sight until it passes, then sneak up from behind and launch your attack from behind or its weak point. You'll win just about all encounters quickly and have little need to repair if you've used this strategy effectively. This particular strategy works effectively when you're in a tank versus his tank, but can work effectively if you're infantry versus a tank as well. But bear in mind, make sure you have cover on the ground because an RPG is not as damaging as a tank shell. And well, I know this one's going to stop the presses, but since you're not in tons of armor to protect you, you're pretty much in a suicide run if you don't take proper cover. Quick point to remember as well, if you destroyed an enemy tank earlier, be aware of where you are in proximity to it. If you're facing away from where it spawns and are close to where it spawns, he'll get the jump on you. When you're in a tank battle, if he hits you first and no teammates can or are willing to repair you as you battle, make a quick choice of whether to back away or continue. Never attempt to turn around. The other driver will simply laugh and kill you quicker. Believe me, I've only, I'm only mentioning a lot of these obvious points because I've seen them happen too many times to simply let it go. You should base your decision on whether to back up or continue fighting based on how much, how much damage his first hit did to you and the angle he's attacking from. If he's hitting the front of your tank and you can hit the side or back of his, continue attacking. If the first hit was quite damaging, but you're not disabled, back up. He may miss, and suddenly the advantage swings to you. Do not say completely stationary, because it makes his job a lot easier. If you're in a tank battle and you have some cover available, and cover can be anything from, say, a pillar, a truck, a train, anything, use what I like to call the peekaboo strategy. Fire your shell at the tank, Back up behind cover until he fires, then go forward again and fire your shell. It's an extremely effective strategy. It makes you a much harder target because you're moving 
and because you have less of your tank exposed and you can continue to attack. It's the best of both attack and defense strategy combined. You can also use smoke to your advantage. Deploy it, sneak around to flank the opposing tank driver to surprise him. Just make sure that when you do this you're attacking the bank, the back or side of his tank. Otherwise your plan may backfire and you gave up your cover. Smoke also works pretty decently well for breaking locks from jets and javelins. Defensively, always look for anti-tank mines as you drive toward an objective, especially if you choose a route taking you directly to the enemy base or toward an enemy flag. This has been made a lot easier since the updates because you can spot anti-tank mines now, but it still pays to always be observant. If you choose to try to use anti-tank mines to take out tanks, do not place them all in a line or clustered up because one shot from the tank, if he sees them, obliterates all of them. My strategy is to put a couple in obvious spots, and if he doesn't see him, congratulations, you blew it up. Beyond that, place more further back toward the objective. This way, if he figures that he's already took care of one mine threat, he'll be surprised when his, when his tank blows up from a second unexpected wave. If possible, plant them around wreckage or on hills or in grass. Basically, just try to conceal them as best as possible. When driving a tank, if the coast seems too quiet, there's a good chance that, well, that clearness is too good to be true. Move around when you believe there could be a chance of infantry in buildings ready to C4 or RPG you. Even a back and forth motion works because, again, it makes you a harder target. For moving targets, aim slightly ahead of them, not at them, otherwise you'll miss behind. This gives them a getaway, or even can be the difference in a tank battle because now he gets the first shot. With regard to attacking, to attacking choppers, or even sometimes low-flying jets if you don't have the guided shell equipped, I learned a trick from my friend Chris. His trick is to turn the turret around if the chopper or jet looks like it will be passing over you and then fire when they appear. It's a very good tip that we've both had lots of success with. You'll see it in the clips. Lastly, as always, practice makes perfect. and Make sure you try and utilize these tips and practice them so much that they become routine. Remember that anyone can drive a tank, but the ones who use effective strategy driving them can win matches single-handedly. If you're not completely convinced, after even all this information I presented here, I can upload a match where I went 31 and 2, I can upload several other matches where I've cracked 30 and 40 kills and under 5 deaths and spent the entire match in one tank alone spawn trapping the other team myself. It's that impactful. Anyway, I hope you learned some tips and enjoyed the tutorial. Come over for my channel for more how-to commentary such as how to drive choppers, how to become an amazing sniper, as well as tons of montages and clips. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.